Good game. Okay. Uh, so <coughs> we assume it's 6.30? Sure. Okay. I'm going to call the meeting to order at 6.30. Um, are there any additions to the agenda? None for me. Anybody else? Review of minutes, May 1st, 2023. Pick me, pick me. Motion to accept the minutes. I, I will second and discuss. Accept. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So, um, thank you for these great minutes. Once more, we would like to point out that uh, although it normally takes six pages or sometimes more to, uh, to cover everything we do, it only took three pages this time. So, the upper right hand corner, you could change. Of each page, you could change six to three. Oh, three of six, or two of six, or one of six. Yes, one of three. And it was and a then, short meeting. And then the other change is uh, the last paragraph on the first page, the first sentence. I believe that what Mr. Queto reported was that emerald ash borer chambers were found on some of the cut trees. They did not find the insects themselves, but rather the you're, living chambers. I, I had not heard that term before. You're accurate. It, yeah. That's exactly what he said. Yeah. I, I wasn't yeah. aware of the... I was fascinated with that term, actually. Yeah, you're, you're correct, Paul. I believe they did later on the search. Yeah, I thought so. I talked, really? to, I talked to Jeff today. Yeah. <coughs> the I think it was after that. And that's what he told me. But okay. Hey, what Just you to have give you an update. I thank you, Paul. That was all I had on um, if I could also just note a change that I'm going to make the motion to adjourn. There's a mister that I'm just going to strike. Oh. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, he I got so used to just the four of you. Yeah, right. and the mister. <laughs> yeah, I see that. Look at that. But I guess theoretically, well, who knows? I don't know. Okay. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Did you vote, Zoe? Thank you. I did. Thank you. The minutes are accepted. Um, public comment. I see people here. Are you public? We're not uh, for uh, I think six forty. Okay. Okay. They're next up. They're next up. Mm -hmm. so we're running a little bit early. But do you, are you expecting anybody else for the six forty uh, agenda item? Okay. So. We don't have any public comment. Let's move to the next item, which is consideration of cemetery sex and position and cemetery maintenance contract. So uh, we've had some changes with the cemetery commission. Um, so the history, uh, cemetery uh, sex and was over one person. Uh, and then several years ago, six or seven years ago, uh, I think times changed, I think you will help and hired uh, uh, Tim Lampson. And so he was the assistant sexton. Yep. And then somewhere along the line, Tim's son got hired. Yep. So the assistant to the system, <laughs> Sexton. Yep. And then this fall, uh, Elliot um, decided that a large part of his job he wasn't able to do any longer. And that was meeting families, dig uh, cremation holes, uh, map out cemetery lots, and so forth. And he wanted to get done with that, but yet still continue. In that conversation, I agreed to take up that those duties. Uh, and in fairness to those guys, I probably didn't articulate it well enough where that was for the short term until we found somebody. I thought that was sort of a, a yeah. given. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't certainly my part. So we went through the winter time. Uh, Springtime, I, I emailed uh, Gina and asked if there was any movement on finding a new sexton. And of course, she got the same word that, well, I thought, you know, I was going to do it. And yeah. So um, I put the, the word out and found my friend James here who. Um, is in that, that line of work. Um, he, uh, he recently signed a contract with Berlin Cloners. Uh, he's open to, to uh, uh, sign on with East Montpelier doing pretty much, you know, soups to nuts on all the cemetery items, including mowing, uh, meeting families, uh, selling lots, so forth, so on, and pay, all the paperwork, so on and so forth. So that's all the stuff Elliot was doing, pretty much? Well, he was also mowing and trimming. Is Elliot still going to do that? So in coming up with this at, the, at our first meeting, I brought the, this proposal up. Uh, it turned out it was actually about $4,000 less than what we're currently paying. Uh -huh. um, and some feelings were hurt. Um, and uh, 
so I feel badly about that. But, but when we did propose it, he, they resigned. Uh, Who resigned? Elliot and Tim resigned. So here we are. Uh, so that happened on, on May 10th. We, had a, we held a meeting here on May 10th. With those two fellows resigned. Um, they resigned because they're feeling from it? I think, I, I, I can't speculate why, but I mean. Well, because they, you didn't move the position on the 10th. I don't know. Because he was the assistant. Before. He was, I don't, but he also had an opportunity to take over those tasks and didn't chose not to do it. Oh. He doesn't want to continue without, without Elliot. I can't speculate on why they quit. Just oh. feelings were hurt. I, and and it's, it's one of those things. And uh, This wasn't a monetary issue, this was? It wasn't, well, nothing was said about monetary. It was the, that um, some of the tasks, the um, piece of the, his job description, he didn't want, want to do. And I, I wasn't going to let it fall on snows, yeah. um, but right. um, I can't do it indefinitely either. I got my own job in life yeah. and so forth. So uh, Elliot has let go of all his duties? Correct, including the cemetery commission position. Another clunky item there was that the Sextons also served on that committee as well. Um, right. That right. was not, there's issues there. And, and so they, they, Elliot has since resigned. Um, Tim wants to remain on for this season and resign in, in October. So Tim's going to keep doing the moment? Tim, no, Tim's going to keep remain on the Cemetery Commission. Okay. And not well. Which is just, you have a meeting and Correct. talk about things. Right. Okay. That's yes. not the work. That's not the work, right. Now, what about Tim's son? Um, I don't know much about him. He I've never met him. Either. I'm sorry? He was helping doing the he, he was helping occasionally, and I really... Well, he was doing it fairly regularly. Okay. I mean, I, I oversee the payroll, yep. and they always had about the same amount of hours in. <laughs> okay. They all, they all so I, I don't know what the answer to, to him is, okay. um, because he wasn't at the meeting, and um, so I, I can't speak to that. But. So I'm here today to present a con... A potential of a contract with uh, James uh, and his company to maintain the cemeteries in town. So you flagged an issue just in passing, John, about a member of the cemetery commission also getting paid by the town to work on the cemeteries. And I mean, that's been widespread on the cemetery commission. I'm trying to think do we have other Isn't that commissions? A at this point? No. It's a committee. Thank you. It was a commission. Right. Thank Sorry. you. Yeah. yeah. So it's uh, so for the, for the purpose of, of the history here, and I have trouble obviously keeping these words separate, but it used to be a uh, a commission elected by the townspeople, and it, it became a committee that is appointed by the select board now. And I'm trying to think whether we have other models where that's the case in town, where committee members. who are in these positions also uh, develop budgets based on their work. Yeah. It, it, it's clunky at best. Yeah. This was a very uncomfortable meeting mm -hmm. uh, because they serve on the committee. Um, right. It, it's clunky it's, at best. It's sort of a conflict. It's clear. Yeah. Sort of. Yeah. It, it's it's yeah. exactly. It's definitely a conflict. Scott, did you want to say something? Yeah, it, it's, it's not directly so related to this, but just for my own clarification okay. or yeah. edification. <clears throat> um, what is the checks and balances and the audit? Is it self-governed who, in other words, is, is the work being done by, <clears throat> from an hourly, it's all the you know, honor system? No, I mean, no it's one, right. no one in this right. office is reviewing any of the work right. or oversight. Sorry? Yeah. They turn in time sheets just like sheet. any other I understand, board. but yeah. if two people get together and say we work five hours, but they were hanging at the wayside, you, there's no way to, I, I'm not no, accusing I, anybody. No, I'm going through this as the Unitarian congregation. We're trying to put, safeguards in because who knows in the future 
And so part of that com part of the even couple conversation was exactly that. Like it was, well, you know, I made the proposal, we hired James and well, who's gonna supervise James? And my quick comment back was who supervises you? And, and you know, it, got, it just went spiral down the hill from there. Mm -hmm. And um, so anyways, feelings were hurt. Here we are. And yeah. so. Yes, yeah, because I, I would not have that conversation with her. if someone came up to me or any of us and said, hey, I don't think they did anything and they were paid $3,000. Well, from an internal control financial yes, that's perspective, there's always appearance and fact. You have to watch the appearance. The fact is there can be nothing wrong or you know happening. However, the appearance could be that the potential could exist for something to occur. So you are always trying to avoid that appearance or have mitigating controls in place to keep everything balanced. That's so kind of what happened with that's the what commission. You're talking about. The commission, they were taking in cash. No, no, I, I they were doing, they're working for themselves. It was a bad, it was a right. problem. We got in an argument at town meeting, you know, blah, 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 right. you know, how it went. So then we went to the committee, yes. more supervision by the town. They were covered by insurances, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So I'm just bringing but, up this. Uh, yeah, this is city anyway, law, so This is town we're, lies. We're gonna move on to a different. Okay. Um, so you're right, and and so basically that model's over because they resigned. Yeah. They resigned. So I don't, you know, there's not nothing, no sense in beating that. Table. Exactly. And just, and just, that horse. just just to reinforce your your sense of the awkwardness of the meeting. I mean, obviously I wasn't at that meeting, right. but I first got wind of this when uh, Rosie contacted me and uh, was talking about the potential contract for some of the services and was asking so how does this work with a conflict of interest with committee members voting on whether to recommend this contract to the select board and thought yeah yeah that's a good point so anyway right so so um, i do have a copy of the contract i'm not sure uh, what the procedures is for doing, doing this what is in the back of my mind is those seminars have not been mowed yet yet this year oh ooh. Oh, um, that's in the back of my that's mind. Crazy. Yeah, it's and long. and um, we do have again. Personally, I'm not going to let this fall on snows. I'll do what I got to do. If we have services up there, and we do have a couple coming up. Sorry. Recording in progress. I wasn't recording with the chaos. In the yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I just up. want to ask about our equipment. Yep. Is oh. This gentleman going to be using our equipment? No. Nope. Yes. He no. brings his own equipment. Right. And we already have a couple mowers. Correct. So uh, in terms of those, it's hard to say, you know, the town have to decide what to do with the, that equipment. Mm -hmm. um, uh, maybe some other department, rec department, I don't, I'm not sure there. Right. He also brings with him his own insurance um, yeah. and uh, the equipment. Um, he'll dig the graves. There's also part of our agenda, we're going to talk about fee structures. Yeah. Um, I've made some adjustments with that so that the town, um, so not only we can pay James for the services he does, the town also realizes some revenue stream as well. From, from people contract or hiring our services to dig graves and, yes. and, and so forth. But we've been contracting that out. The, Correct, you've been contracting for full, uh, for full burials yes. for $1,100. Yeah. Mr. James here charges 650 okay. and we're gonna keep our rate. Okay. And then is he going to do the meeting with the yep. people, the families? So you want to do the ones? Yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, I, yes, I yeah. went over extensively with yeah. them. Would you like to say something about yourself and your work? Yeah. Um, well, I have been doing this for quite a while. My dad's in a similar business, and so I'm pretty experienced in it. I do have, as John said, I do have my own equipment, so I know, know how to, I know how the cemetery operates and stuff, and I know the ins and outs and stuff. But if I do have any questions, I would definitely come to you guys first, and if any, uh, Situations came up. That was that. What happens? Where, where do you live? Uh, I live in. I'm located in Cabot. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. And how long have you been doing this work? <laughs> well, I'm 17, but um, yeah, I've been helping Dad for probably like 10 years. Doing that it. More than half your life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Did you, go, did you go to the Cabot school system? <laughs> no, I actually went to a private school over in Marshfield. So. Oh. So how, how does that work signing a contract with a 17-year-old? I didn't know he was 17. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, July. 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 Um, but he holds an LLC. I do have an LLC, yes. Uh -huh. So he signed a contract with the LLC? Yeah. 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 And so you'd be contracting with the LLC, not necessarily him. Yeah. Um, but uh, So I, I don't know the answer to that. Yeah. That's, a, that's a, some attorney's question. Uh -huh. well, and for the liability. And insurance perspective. Well, he's got insurance. Yeah, he's got insurance. Your own. Yeah. Right. And he has his own LLC, so if he has that. It's... Yeah, it's an LLC. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, it's a it's it's contract with him. It, it, sounds like a, it sounds like a good way to go, but I'm a little bit hesitant to just jump right into it when we've heard about it for the first time. Sure. Because right now. The problem is we got to get those 
cemetery yeah. called yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. There's no, it has to be mowed. Why don't we do an interim approval? And, and uh, James is, is um, I don't want to speak short term, but I think James is ready to jump on this uh, back tomorrow. If you guys give him a nod for the yeah. interim, if you guys want to do that, I think I think he'd be open for that. I mean, we haven't seen the contract. Yeah, so I do have it. I think I have one cup. How does that? They haven't. Yeah, okay. Is this a quick question? Is it by the hour? Or how's no, it's, um, so it's a $19,000 contract oh, for the year. Paid, payable over four installments of okay. 27, 14, 29. Uh, on top of that, he will get paid for his services on the, on the, on the, on the other, yep, other fees. So and that's by the so for, by the job. Area. For example, uh, yeah. uh, a a full grave, seven hundred, a yeah. um, um, cremation grave, two fifty. There's uh, 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 overtime for weekends yeah. uh, for Saturday specifically, and after three p.m. I think it is. Yeah. yeah. And last year, what was the budget? So I I want to say with twenty four rings a bell with me. Um, yeah. Is what we spent. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the budget amount is different than what we spent, so I, I don't know. I have to look. I don't have those yeah. numbers in front of me. All right. So why don't we just review the contract? Yep. Mow, mow, um, on an interim basis. Yeah. Well, what we're going to have to pay by the hour for that, or if we approve it, I guess it'll all be in the same amount. If we don't approve right. it, then we'll have to pay him by the hour. I, I, yeah. Would you be accepting of that? I mean, yeah, I'm totally so I mean, we just gotta have a... You gotta look at this. Yeah. 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 And we gotta digest, we gotta compare the numbers. Yeah. No. I and think we, it's gonna be fine, no. honestly. Yeah. Is that? Yes. No, it's already blah, blah, blah. There's just a few hoops that we have to jump through to make sure that it's gonna be okay. And I think just it's gonna be okay, but we gotta exactly. get the exactly. temperature. Exactly. Exactly. And just know, like, this kind of came to head on Wednesday last week. Sure. Yeah. So this is... Yeah, all no, new impression. Right. So I don't, I don't blame that at all. Um, do you want to discuss the fees increases? Is that it's part that of the it, it's kind of is. So um, before, before we do sure. that, um, can we just try to get it understanding what's going to happen tomorrow? If, it, uh, if we give you the green light, James. Speak so go ahead. Yeah. Um, so what are we here? I think it was thirty dollars an hour. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. Just a minute, just a minute. I think it was on side. Well, it's like thirty dollars an hour. He gets paid thirty dollars an hour. It's, 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 it's okay. So right if we do not sign a contract, we'll pay him that. Yeah. Keep track of the hours. Okay. If we do sign the contract, then that's going to be in the grand total. Correct. Yeah. So okay. I'm going to assume that we're starting. Yeah. Yeah. So that sounds like should, should we make should a motion, motion to that effect? That we're going to pay him the 30? Yeah. Yeah, we probably should. Yeah. Just keep it clear. Yeah. 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 Okay. So I move to approve payment to, what's the name of your LLC? Uh, JM Yard Services. To JM Yard Services at the rate of $30 an hour cemetery maintenance uh, on a provisional basis uh, to be replaced by the fee for the annual contract if that is approved at our June 5th meeting. Is that a good way to word it? That's, that's a little yeah. clumsy, but... Well, I'm sure that yeah. it'll come out okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's all right if I ask a question. You need a second on that, right? Right. I'll second ask a question. Oh, I'll yeah. Ask a question. Under for the discussion. Yeah, so it does say in here, unless I'm looking at the wrong contract, your, your company, your LLC is called Creative Visions? Oops. No, that's the wrong one. That, that's, that's, that's the wrong one? That's, 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 that's the next issue. That's the next issue. Oh, okay. Because that's mowing too. <laughs> but that's, that's mowing. It is. Yeah, it is. Oh, okay, <laughs> never mind. Yeah. <laughs> they all look alike. Oh, really? So, never mind. That the lawns do. Okay. Yeah. okay, so you seconded the motion. I did. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Okay, so the other thing that could happen is if there's a burial or something. So when we do have, uh, I have at least one scheduled, and then Daniel will go change and make sure that is the one. Okay, it's and, and, and we'll pay him on the yep. rate yep. that he's set in the contract. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah. Specifically to those. Yeah. Okay, so that sounds good. Um, this is a change. It is, and, and um, again, I don't. You know, I wish it didn't come down this way. But yeah, that's, that's makes me feel a little yeah slightly uncomfortable because Elliot served the town for I don't know.
he had yeah, years. Yeah. yeah. On the other hand, so you know, when we made the change from the commission to the committee, then there were some rumblings yeah. at that point, and this is just an aftershock of, of that transition yeah, update. Yeah. All right. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, did, you, did you, you want to talk quickly about the, the means changes? Sure. <coughs> sort of the basic proposal sure. versus the actuals. Um, the monthly column is what we get currently. Yeah, I don't have a copy of that, but you can read it to me. Yeah. It's, it's in, it's in your oh, it's in my packet. Yes, sir. Right. Thank you. Would you, would, you assume, would you assume that Go it would Go to the next page, John. Go to no. the next one. That's the summary. Of the set, set there we are. Those are the current fees. And then would, this would, you, would you assume that this would not be in your packet? I don't know. No, I would assume it would always be in your packet. I, I make no assumptions. Oh, uh, <laughs> you, well, you should have. I make zero. After <laughs> today, I wouldn't tell them all. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so let's go over the fees. I got it. Current costs, four grade lots. So this is the selling of the lots. Correct. And wow. who, who owns that? The town owns it. So we, the first. The so first why do you want to go up to 3,600 from 1,400? Well, um, so a couple reasons. One is, I, my opinion is that's a little low, 1,400. Okay. Normally grades locally are, are about $1,000 a grade. Wow. Yeah. Too bad. Too bad I bought money. So that's, that's our money. That, that, can't that, take that, it we own that property. We own the land. And that's that's true. <laughs> right. So, so, you, so, you, so you're, you're talking on behalf of us. Yeah. To our yeah. benefit. So, and then the other thing to realize is Mr. Gaines here collects a 10% fee for selling the lots, filing right. paperwork, and all right. that. Should, that, should be, that, that should be in here? Okay. Well, it's under the contract. So. Okay. Okay. I mean, yeah. Really yeah. Okay. So the cremation lots are keeping the same? Correct. <coughs> Do most of the sales um, occur with somebody on the cemetery commission or whatever doing the sales, or sometimes it just comes directly to us? No, it does not. Because they, they, Jane will physically meet somebody at the cemetery. Okay. Is this the good spot? So all, all sales would be going through you. Yes. Okay. Yeah, because okay. I know when I bought mine, I met with Elliot. Okay. So walk around just, I'm, I'm learning. I'm like, I'm like a bear deer, so here you go. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Just did the whole. Yeah, you got enough property. Um, <laughs> The full burial price, um, that is kind of consistent with other cemeteries are getting, and it still allows Swoop Town to realize the revenue stream. And then the cremation grave opening, um, that's a little low compared to others. And again, it, it fits James as well as the town for realizing some revenue there. Um, are, are these, are yep. You, yep. James, also you get a 10%? No, no. Nope. Just, yeah. just on the sales? No. His services. fees are going to be in the contract. So... That's fine. Yeah. We can read that later. Okay. And, and then um, currently we don't have any additional fees for Saturdays. And um, so we're, it's very common cemetery charge for that. Um, James, you do not do Sunday burials, correct? I do not. Yeah. yeah. And again, that's not uncommon to hear of. Okay. Um, and then uh, there's, there's a 3.30 overtime fee um, where, where it's currently there's none. Um, so some, you know, funerals, that, and rightfully so, it's just setting boundaries and people can really hang around cemeteries sometimes and if they understand that there's a monetary hit there they feel they can understand that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So these things we can change. You can do whatever you want. Okay. These are just proposals. Yeah. Okay. But but you just bear in mind his costs are in consideration of that too. So you I would definitely look at his fee structures versus yeah. that and see where yeah. it all fits and so forth. Okay. Yeah. Yep. All right. Does the full the full burial grave mm -hmm. opening does that include the foundation for the stone? No, the foundation yeah. wouldn't cover that. So that's going to be broken out here somewhere. Um, I'm, I think it is. It's, uh, in, just, contract, yeah. it, it's in his contract. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I got to read this. Oh, page. his foundation fee because a lot of people hire somebody. Right. Right. Yeah, so he just hired somebody separate. Oh, for the yeah. foundation. Right. Some cemeteries don't allow you to do that. Oh, they don't? No. Oh, right. Oh, really? Claymont has a place that just they just do theirs. Oh, okay. For the, what's the average? Yeah. 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 His dad yeah. does Claymont. Yeah, does. So, okay. What's the average burials a year off the top of your head? One, two, five, five ten. When Pat's Healy started, we almost never do burials up there. We got six last year. <laughs> so, so six last year? Uh, no, it's last year. I want to see me. Right. Three. So it's low single digits. Okay. Yeah. Just 
and then we'll pass over the Can we have one discussion at a time, please? I, I was just asking, knowing nothing about any of this, what is the average per year of burials? And it's in the low single digits, apparently. Low okay. single digits. I don't need to. Less to, than 10. Less than $10. That's, that's single digits. Okay. No, just, numbers of people. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, I don't need to prolong so, this. So you mentioned Pat Healy. Um, He's been doing backhoe work for, for the town. Uh, so would, with this contract, this proposed contract, would he be out of the picture? He, he would. I have, I've had, had that discussion with him, and he's he was doing it to help out. This is not his bread and butter. Uh, in fact, uh, with Pat, there was a lot of um, 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 uh, parameters, like the, the week before Memorial Day, he wouldn't do any work there. Mm -hmm. He doesn't work on Saturday. So a lot of stuff in there that came with Pat. And right, so he has his own cemetery to look after, yeah, yeah. and so he was sort of more or less helping us out, yeah. and, um, and and doing it for a premium, you know. So mm -hmm. I think this is a okay. Okay. And James, what other cemeteries are you working at now? Um. Well, I uh, currently work at uh, Merlin Corner Cemetery, but I also help my dad out, and he takes care of over seventy cemeteries. Seven zero. Seven zero. Yes. Okay. Yeah, he does everything for those. But um, yeah. Uh -huh. So I'm. I, I know what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I, I like seeing a young entrepreneur. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome. So we have a lot to digest. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. We got it. So we'll let you. Thank you. Down. Well, thank you for all your work. Yeah, you bet. appreciate it. And keep us up to date. Sure. You bet. We'll use the next step. Yep. And then for going forward to our next meeting, John, will you continue continue working with James? Oh, absolutely. We, we don't need to step in and supervise. No, I mean, I'll be part of the commission, and, and that's yeah. what I agreed to do. And, and yeah. I'm not going to let this fall in snow. We'll yeah. get through this. Okay. Sure okay. Yeah. But good. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you. your your work. All right. Uh, the next item: consideration of cemetery fee structure. We just did. Okay. We just did. It. We're not making any changes right now. No, we got to go over the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Seven oh five discussion with listers. We have one lister in the building that I've seen. We were talking to herself, but it was more like a point. Okay. Oh, okay. talk about the town lawn mowing contract renewal which is what John has already reviewed it because he thought it was a cemetery <laughs> <laughs> that's okay <laughs> like I said lawns are all green unless they burn then they <laughs> it's very dry out right now um, so what do we got to look at in the town so with the lawn mowing contract this is a three year contract so it was done in 2020 Tim Fraser yeah. came to talk to me because yeah. I wasn't aware this was a for real. <laughs> I don't have yep. a list to go off of. Right. So, um, so this is a renewal proposal for a renewal of that agreement. There's essentially no change in the agreement. Same rate, same scope of work. Yep. So, if you are comfortable, he has, from what I have seen, at least done a good job. Well, I just want to give you a little history. On. Okay. So, when we started doing the contract for mowing the lawns, we discussed putting it out to bid because that's what a lot of people do, and yep. we did. We put it out to bid, and I don't think Tim was the lowest, but he was local, and we felt comfortable with giving him that contract. And we thought that because he gives us good service, he is local, we continued it on. Yep. And so we could put it out to bid again if we so chose, but I don't really choose to do that. I'm just giving you a history on it. Yeah. I, yeah, I just want everyone to know that. I read that in 2020 it wasn't partly because of COVID. It, at least that was the reference in the select board. Yeah, but we had it We had it before that, 2020. Yeah. Yeah, no, I know. Right. But the renewal so, was not at that And point. so because, you know, it gives us good service, it's local, it seems reasonable enough, we've continued with it. And I just soon continue with it today. It's that's fine with me. That's up to yeah. the select board. Yeah. What do you say? Gina said she's happy you've heard no complaints over the last no, few years. No complaints, and I like hiring local people to do the work for us. 
and, he, and he's not proposing an increase. And he's not proposing yeah. an increase, so what the heck? Yeah. I'll make a motion to accept the contract. We have a second. I second the motion. So we made the second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh, the ayes aye. appear to have it, they do have it. Okay, that's out of the way. Uh, so, are the listers ready to discuss the, okay, good. So let's tackle that discussion with listers. This has to do with their budget overrun. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, Sounds like you folks are gonna go way over budget. Is that correct? Am I reading this incorrectly or am I reading correctly? I don't know what are you reading. I'm reading the select board memo. Oh. Training the actual results for the fiscal year, the listers are tracking to a payroll of thirty thousand against a budget of twenty three thousand. The actual results as of April 30th was twenty-five thousand two hundred and forty-six dollars and twenty-five cents versus a budget of twenty-three thousand. Yeah. So currently, well, as of the end of April, over just under twenty-five hundred. However, once we roll in the May eleventh payroll, which we can see now they're at twenty-six yeah. four fourteen, four fifteen. Yeah. So now we're at thirty-four fifteen over. Right. So if you annualize those numbers for what we've incurred year to date. Yes. That would trend that they would end yeah. the year at approximately thirty thousand dollars against the budget of twenty three thousand. Yeah. But again, that's just supplying an average using the year. Yeah. That doesn't mean that. So mm -hmm. it's just a way to trend the numbers. Yeah. yeah. And then I've summarized the hours worked by Lister through May eleventh of twenty three. Deb mm -hmm. has worked six hundred twenty eight point two five hours. Ross four hundred sixty four point five, and Chris two ninety seven point five. So historically, I don't know if the listers have ever gone over their budget that I can remember. It's usually way under. From yeah, it's usually way under. It does seem odd because we don't have any more new properties. What? So is there, can you give us some clarity on um, what's going on? Because we're way over budget and in my memory, I don't remember going over budget. So are you going to tweak back your hours until July 1st, or what are you planning to do? Well, talk to Bobby, so. <laughs> we did get the message from your last meeting that we should try to scale back, so we yeah. postponed doing some tasks that we could wait until July to do. We have our role in the equalization study, for example, where we set the CLA, and so we talked to our district advisor, and she said, don't do it until July, that's fine. Yeah. But we have to do our part of the Homestead Declaration downloads and the current use because we have to lodge the grand list in June. That's a statutory deadline. Yes. Yeah, that's right. And those affect, you know, the tax bills are going to go out and everything, and the grievance period, the whole thing. So that is going to be complicated by the fact that, and this is part of one of the reasons that we racked up so many hours. I alone have taken over 100 hours of training this year because I was new, but also because they've introduced a brand new software program for us to do the current use and the homestead declarations and the sequelization study thing too. And so there's a lot of training associated with that. They just rolled it out. We're supposed to start on it like this week, but there's a training actually Wednesday this week and they told us we should all go to it before we dive in. So we're planning to do that. Yeah. And you know, that was kind of a monkey wrench in the work so we didn't really need, but um, there's a little bit of money in here that's reimbursements that are mileage and postage but that's insignificant to the whole. Yeah. I mean, those things probably should be moved out into the budget line for postage and the budget line for mileage. So I don't believe those line. items are in this. I I'm don't sorry. Think I'd have to look. I don't believe those items are in here. This actually ran out of the payroll module. I'm not. Sure. I'd have to look, but I'm not sure if those are in here. Well, they're posted to the payroll and general ledger. Okay. And it could I'll have to go to the other accounts. Okay. What but anyway. Oh, sorry. Right now. <laughs> What's the hourly? Nineteen. Nineteen dollars. I think we should cut it down. To get it within budget. Well, I'm so I think that's a good idea. Dollar twenty-five. Right there you go. Yeah. So the other thing is, we did like fifty site inspections last year, and this yeah. year has been more like seventy-five because oh, yeah. there's been that much more work done. You know, a lot of people bought <coughs> houses and are got all crazy with the COVID thing, where they're you know upgrading and building garages and decks and stuff. 
every one of those represents time we have to spend sketching. And well, first we do a site visit. So we have been spending our Saturdays going out and doing those site inspections, and then we come back and we have to put the sketch in the program and do the assessment, and that's going to generate a change of appraisal letter. So we're doing that too. So last year we sent out maybe what was it? 110 change of appraisal letters? No, that was 110 current use changes. Maybe 100 change of appraisal letters, and this year it's going to be more like 130 or so. Uh -huh. So there's, you know, there's just actually more work. And then what else? I don't know. Let's see. I took some notes. So it sounds like training is, is a big budget buster if you spent 100 hours? Well, that's like $2,000 right there. You know, that's, why that's, that's why that's why. Well, the, the good thing news about that is once you get trained, you don't have to get trained next year. Yeah, so that's, that's kind of a, that's like a staff transition thing, right. I guess. 230 change of appraisal letters? Yeah. Oh, 230, I'm not adding up right. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> so basically what, we're, what I'm saying anyway is that if you hold your hours down <coughs> to July 1st, do the things that are necessary, and then next year we will expect less training, because you'll be trained, and our budget can, can be more in line with what we have budgeted in the past. Is that correct? I have no control over the time. <laughs> yeah. Right now, because it's a hybrid, they want us to work in their software program online and then download it and upload it back and forth between Nemeric and their programs because we have to generate our tax bills from Nemeric. What they're working toward is our tax bills will be generated from their software program and not Nemeric. They're kind of phasing us away from memory and into their software programs so that we're working together with them instead of two different software programs that have to talk back and forth to each other. Who's they? The Department of Taxes, Property and Valuation Review Division. Thank you. They're the ones that we work with. And the other thing was uh, we're statutorily required to lodge the grant this June 4th, so there are all these things we have to do. We can't just put them off. No, no, I understand But that. one of the things they said was we could... Uh, let's talk to the district advisor again. Apply for a an extension. So instead of trying to cram it all in in the next couple of weeks, we can spread it out towards the end of the fiscal year. It's still the same amount of work, but we can right. take our time getting at it. So we did bring the form tonight that you have to sign to get the extension. Okay. And that would spread the pain a little bit. So these are the end of the fiscal year. It won't change. That's the only six weeks. That's still yeah. the. Still well, no, they want to put all the hours in between now and July 1st to get that done. If you file an extension, you can do it in August. Is that correct? Well, it's a 30 day extension, so it's only from June 4th to July 4th. So yeah. most of the work's going to happen in June anyway. It's, it's so it's not going to make any difference whatsoever. Yeah. So, yeah. But it means for, instead of us, you know, working yeah. at it like crazy for the next couple of weeks, we might just space it out. It's going to take right. us longer than usual. Well, they can space it out for the next month. <coughs> doing it. The deadline is by June, June 4th. So that's all. Then we can do that. So yeah, I don't know. Just, I mean, if you go back to the beginning of this year, you remember that we had a period where Ross was out for ten weeks. So we did the best we could to keep on track with all the things we were supposed to do. But it probably took me twice as long to do anything as it would take him because he'd been doing it for twenty years. So that didn't help. But we stayed on track. We got the tax bills out on time in spite of it. Long phone calls. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, you know, it wasn't an ideal year in that sense either. Yeah, we just don't want to have a trend, so it sounds like we're not going to. This is going to be some one-time expenses, training, etc., and we'll try to keep your your hours down until July 1st, and then things should settle down after that, is what I'm you, getting from you. Do you know what, what is the budget for next year? Do you know the what the budget item, the slide item is to offhand? One up slightly, I can't remember. But it's, it's 24. It's, there was a uh, request for a higher pay increase than what's typically okay. been done you, you in the past. Just, you so. just answered it. But yeah, not, still wouldn't cover this. 24.5. <coughs> yeah, okay. It'll, it'll I be went right. actually higher than has historically been done. This, this budget has been kept flat for years. Okay. So yeah, because they've always been way in. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The other thing I just want to mention is. We also did our own projection for the fourth quarter this year, and we only compared it to fourth quarters because if you take it and spread it over the whole year, the third quarter is traditionally a very slow time for the listeners. So you can't say the fourth quarter is going to be level with the other quarters. It kind of goes up and down. And the fourth quarter is the big push yeah. to lodge the grand list in June. So. Right. 
And right. everything happens as of April 1st. I mean, you know, we'd like to go out and do some of our inspections earlier and spread it out over the year, but it's got to be as of April 1st, and there's houses under construction. And we're supposed to say it's 46% done on April 1st. You know? yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. so just to be clear, you said that we could actually see a higher rate of hours from now until the end of the fiscal year than has been through the year. If, if by fourth quarter, you mean what we're in right I'm now. I'm just saying don't compare the fourth quarter to the third quarter. If you look back and say this is how many hours they put in the third quarter, that's not indicative of so you, I thought you said the fourth quarter was more than, yeah. so in other words, the 7,000 is going to go up. Yeah. No, it's going to go up. No, we're our, not going to do it that way. Our projection was yeah. 31,000 was, you know, we figured my tip. Yes, so it is higher than what I, what and you, I, and you were saying what I was saying is that I've averaged over the entire year, but she's saying it's a fourth quarter is heavier, higher, then higher. it would be higher than what I yeah. calculated yeah, here yeah. by averaging the year. Right. So what did you come out with? 30. Oh, okay. So the only re uh, comparable conversation that, that I'm aware of happened before I joined the select board, but I was at a select board meeting for some reason that, where it came up, uh, where the listers came to the select board and said, hey, look, look at uh, the hours that we put in so far this year. We're going to go over our budget, and we would like some, some extra money in the budget in the select board. Uh, declined to do anything that night, and I don't think, I'm not sure, but I don't think they acted on it. They didn't sound like they were uh, inspired to, to act on the request at the time. And I'm honestly not sure where the, the budget ended up that year for the listers. But my point is, the listers were proactive, and they came to the select board, and they said, hey, we're, we're on track to overrun our budget here. Uh, can, can you help us out? And you know, this was a different process where uh, Gina flagged for us that you guys were running hot and we needed to come to you. So I'm wondering, going forward, what you guys think would be a good process to, to make sure that this doesn't happen again. Or at least that we're aware of what's going on. We're yeah, we knew we were going to go on because of, you know, circumstances just caused it to, uh, to happen. But you know, at least if we're, I think what he's saying is if we're aware of what's, instead of, hey, yeah. this is the situation, this has been going on for months. Yeah, we could do a budget status report, we could pull a budget status report once a quarter, once a month, whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, I've actually spoken with Michelle about creating updates that can go to the various individuals, you know, teams um, throughout the year. So really, I would rather us get into a cadence of each month, here's your budget, here's where you yeah. are. I mean. Mm -hmm. I think they, the budget has always been 20 hours. I think it's in total week for, if that's by memory, of what's in the budget for the lister. So, I mean, when you're filling out a timesheet, if you also know on average what you should be working, it's the budget status is just putting the dollars to it. But mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I think that, you know, with all our new personnel in here and getting up to me, this is going to be one of the processes that we engage exactly. in is keeping an eye on the budgets. So, yeah. it's fine. Do you usually look at budget status reports in your select board meetings? Yes. Yeah. I look at some quick question that might be um, baseless and ignorant, but um, some of the uh, trainings were based on synthesizing state software with other software. Is that correct? Yeah, and the state actually reimburses the town. The town has gotten twelve hundred and fifty nine dollars uh -huh. or something. So there's a, another line in the budget with $1,259 sitting in it, which is supposed to be the state reimbursement to the town for the time that we spent working right. on some of their stuff. And they talked about it in the legislature this year. That's $1 that's per parcel. Mm -hmm. They talked about change. I don't know where I'm supposed to look. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Um, they, they were talking about raising it to $2 a parcel because they recognize the fact that it does not reflect how much time we're actually spending on this and now they've added these two more modules to this software program. They're basically having us do a little bit more of their work. Yeah. So they're mm -hmm. trying to bump up the reimbursement to the town. So the town really does have Right. So we have something. some money that we go back in our budget. Yeah. The twelve hundred dollars. I have to ask Michelle about that. that <coughs> you know yeah, okay. Just 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 sitting there in I was just wondering if they would reimburse all of it because it is their software they want other people to um, yeah, learn. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, if there were going to be further further trainings, if the, if the state was going to be paying for those. 
The one thing I should tell you about the training that the state offers is that all of it is tuition free. So they're already giving us all this training right. free. They don't charge us a thing because they want us to be yeah. as good as we can be. And they acknowledge the fact that this dollar per parcel is a pittance compared to the amount of time they're taking of ours. So that's why they're talking about giving us more. The other money they give us is for that grand list reappraisal fund that goes in there. And that's kind of being saved for the day we do our reappraisal. So yes. we don't really want to yeah. touch that. Yeah, yeah. Some towns do use it for their listers as they go. Yeah, we're going to need it for the reappraisal. I know. That's right. the best thing to so. do is to hang on to it. Yeah, put it in the fund and put it away because that's going to cost us over 100000 bucks. So. Gotta have it. All right. I, don't know, I don't think we're going to squeeze any more out of the state. They think they're being as generous as they can be right, right now. But, but that's a good point, Zoe. That it would be nice to squeeze them, but I mean, that's not usually successful. Well, write a letter to your congressman and tell him that $2 a parcel would be better than $1 a parcel because they definitely were talking about it. Yeah. I don't know where it went. Yeah. Okay. I think that we've had a fruitful discussion. And we can move on. And we're expecting less soon. hours. It, we're we're right. squeezing them down as much as we can. <coughs> I will say that today we were just looking at some of the reappraisals we've done. It's not even the complete list. And our grand list has grown over $2.1 million as a result. So Good. we're actually <laughs> making up Generating some money. Well, yeah. <laughs> we're going to need it to soften the tax rate increase that we're going to vote on in August. So in that spirit, how about we invite our representative into our next meeting, now that the session is over, to just have a conversation about this and other issues that affect us? Or the, meeting, or the meeting after the next or Let's meeting. just see what we have for mm -hmm. items. Yeah, yeah. I might not be able to make the next meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. yes. We gave it to her, right? yeah. Oh, we both had a copy, sorry. Okay. Um, is everyone satisfied with our meeting with the listeners? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, mean, I hope you've, you've heard our message because we were concerned last time we heard that there was a budget bust and we were not aware of it. And we, yeah. we're concerned. Well, thanks, uh, thank you for coming in and giving us all the reasons. Um, <clears throat> I think that we'll keep an eye on things and you will too. And we'll see how it goes. Okay. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Um, Thanks for learning all the new software. <coughs> Not always well, fun. I know there's a lot, a lot of things to learn, especially with the mandates from the state, and that impacts everybody and everything. All our interactions that we have with the state, I have them myself on my farm all the time. It's like, oh no, something else. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like never ending. It seems like. Parcel ID numbers, why don't they add a field for parcel ID numbers? So it's kind of evolving as people are complaining yeah. about stuff like that. Yeah, right. So it's going to be better next year than it is this year, I hope. Exactly. Okay. For sure. Um, Take care. Thank you. Oh, 725. We're a little bit early, which is okay. Is anyone coming in to talk about the streetlights? I don't Bruce think Mackerson? somebody in the. Okay. I called to let him know that somebody in the Okay. Um, does everyone know what this is about? I'm bringing it to you tonight. Bruce Meckelson called me um, because he said that he was notices when he's driving at night that it's very dark at the intersection of Town Hill Road and U.S. Route 2. Um, and initially I thought he was asking for a traffic light. <laughs> it's a street light to illuminate the intersection. My biggest concern there was that V-Trans would have an issue with that because you're kind of illuminating. I know we have Town Hill, but too. Yeah. It's not ours. Mm -hmm. But no, they, they were okay with that if it is something the select board wants to do. Um, I took just like an informal, you know, count. It, it's not common unless like we have our Route 14, U.S. Route 2, there's street lights there, but yeah. I mean, Muddy Brook doesn't have one. I mean, it's pretty common when you drive down Route 2 that they don't exist. So yeah. if we think that would be helpful, it's not I don't know, you got headlights on your car. It's yeah. not an expensive. Well, I, I drove around the other night and I had no headlights on my truck. The street light would have been nice, but I'm not going to petition this slide for Well, and, and um, Edie Miller actually sent me an email because she gets the agendas. Yeah. And she said, I'm not sure what the discussion's about. She said, um, but uh, she, 
she suggested of visibility, I think what she was thinking was if the issue was visibility to see the street signs and whatnot to maybe add some reflecting strips on some of the signage there. And that could help draw, again, your lights would then catch that if, if, if she said if the concern was not seeing the intersection, so that here, there's an intersection there. Here, here's some of the history behind that. Um, 10 years ago or so, the town went out and replaced all of its street lights with the LED ones, which are much more efficient, and brought down our power costs. At the time that they, we did that, then the Energy Committee, Dave Grundy leading it, did an inventory of, of uh, the lights in places that might get a light, that didn't have a light, and that corner came up. Uh, and I spent some time looking into it, and I couldn't find any justification for, for putting a light there. Uh, there's no commercial business there. There's no pedestrian safety involved. Um, I mean, if you look at some of the documents that lighting engineers put on, they, they want to have lights everywhere. If you have a railway grade level crossing <coughs> then with you know no pedestrians or anything else near it, you should have lights up, uh, according to some of them. Not, not just the red lights, but, but just white lights. And, uh, but in terms of objectives for, for safety, I, I, I couldn't find anything. And the select like board declined to put anything up there. Uh, but since then, there have been some improvements. For a while, there was a large sign saying Town Hill Road that was there, and that made it much easier to see the intersection than we just had the, the 4 by 4 post. And that's gone now. If we could tell Guthrie, it would be a great idea to have that back. I've, I've missed that. Uh, but if you have your headlights on, uh, if you have headlights, and you sometimes have they go out unexpectedly, <laughs> and they're like, "Oh no, I wish there was a street light here." Yeah. <laughs> then, just, then, then the especially then, when you're hauling a bulldozer then, on the back of the truck, yeah, it's like, then, ah. then, then that helps. <laughs> um, but but we've also seen that along Route Two, at least coming from the village, I don't come from the other direction enough to know. There are now two signs, one on either side of the road, saying, "Hey, this intersection is coming up." And as you come down the hill, Town, town Hill Road, there are now two stop signs, not just one, plus the re huge reflective sign on the guardrail on the other side of the road, uh, just indicating that this is two-way. I would say that from a traffic safety point of view, a street light there might even make it less safe because without the street light, you can easily see, or at least more easily, see the headlights of traffic coming from the other street than if the street lights were there. I thought the same thing. Yeah. I questioned that as well. And the, and the, I mean, I like it when I drive home at night. I have a turn that I make on yeah. my road that I always know if there's a car coming. Because right. Of that. right. And I can see their light coming. If the light, if the road was lit, I know because I come from that's the That's what I did. <coughs> with the yeah. vehicle you can't see people. It's like, oh, I can see the car. <laughs> and, would, yeah. and the moon. <laughs> and would, would a street light um, dampen the reflective ability of the signs, or would you use a street light? It would. You might not see. Right. Oh, I think it would. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So to, to the yeah. negative of the... That's true. So getting the flavor of this discussion, I'm, I'm seeing this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I knew there was a lot of history with this. Mm -hmm. I knew yeah. that was what I think prompted the speed that we have today. So I knew yeah. we all would have history on this and be the best to... That, that's another change worth getting in the minutes and into the discussion that, um, you know, since you know, 10 years ago, we lowered the speed limit in conjunction with the state. We worked with the state, petitioned them, they lowered well, the speed limit. it wasn't 10 years ago that we just... No, it was it was just, yeah. I'd say since we considered this... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah right. Limit, right. The, since yeah. then. Yeah. yeah. The speed limit's been Yeah, it was like two years ago that we right. lowered that. It was two years ago. And so that also yeah. makes the intersection safer than, than it used to be. But yeah, getting getting that East Montpelier sign, or, I'm sorry, um, Town Hill Road sign yeah. up would be helpful. <coughs> and you know, it wouldn't be a, a bad idea to put reflective tape on the poles the way that uh, the state has done with these, this pedestrian crossing by the post office. So what happened to the sign of not if somebody stole it or did it get knocked over? I don't know. Well, I'm just asking that because if it did get stolen, you want to make sure you put it in so it doesn't get stolen this time. Yeah. It's not a real sexy sign, I don't care. You know why? You but never know why people take stuff like somebody that. Somebody took the Sparrow Farm sign. Okay, so <laughs> we're so just to cut the chase here. Yeah. Let's reject that. We're just we're just yeah. a discussion. We yeah. don't, you don't need to act. act no, action. I mean, we're, and, and we are going to talk to the road foreman about yeah. doing some things to okay. improve the visibility there. Yeah, sounds good. Um, so let's let's like to move to the next slide. Somebody has something to say. So no. I always
always do, but no. Uh, but that's okay. <laughs> what, what, I, what I agree with you is this. Let's move along. Okay. <laughs> okay. So this next one, discuss residential trash concern on U.S. Route 2. So with this, I believe this has been going on a couple of years. Um, this down here? Particular, this down. it's a residence. It's right behind Classic Auto. Um, and... There's trash. Jenny Burley, I reached out to Jenny Burley because I knew Jenny had been involved. And Jenny was never able to really make any headway there. You all have pictures um, there in front of you. It's essentially bags of trash. It looks like the resident is disposing of their household waste just outside their residence. Um, so... Tyson went and took some photos, um, which are the photos that you have there, of what he saw. Um, there is a regulation in the in the bound zoning reg documents that's over here um, in section 3.13 that does state that the outdoor storage of trash or recyclable materials, which is incidental to a principal or accessory use, shall be screened or hidden from public view and the view of neighboring residential properties. One of the neighbors that did come in and speak with me about this, the trash, it, the wind blows. You know, the bags are being ripped open, likely from animals, you know. So then wind is blowing, trash is blowing all over that area. Tyson told me when he was there, the uh, uh, property adjacent to this, um, it kind of slopes down towards the river. And he said you can see trash blown down into there. So it's clearly making its way around the area. It's not contained. Um, one challenge is it sounds like no one can actually speak to the person that lives there, so I'm not sure. Yeah. Is it a rental or is it owned? I believe it's a rental. Then but we're, no one's really sure. No. So, um, I guess we can find out from a listener <laughs> who owns the property. Well, I mean, I have that. I mean, that's on, the, that's on the website. Yeah. The, um, you we know, know I mean, I, the owner I, is responsible. Yeah. yeah. So, the owner is responsible. Well, we get in touch with the owner. So I don't know, would you like a, laugh, uh, a letter drafted yeah. to the owner yeah. stating that a concern was and brought in, to the select board and, and, and I can state yeah. in violation of this particular zone to please things. contact the office yeah. and we can go from there. Or yes. say please clean it up. Well, yeah. And it's inferred. <laughs> You're in violation of the regulation. Give them like and two weeks. Unless it's cleaned up, there'll be further action taken. That was that was my yeah I don't really know. That's you okay. Know. We'll just we'll just figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess that's a good first step. I just want to put out Mark that that regulation is kind of a thin read. Um, and it, it says that you can't have a garbage can next to your house. <laughs> that you, that you have to put no, a shield. On. There's, a, there's a reality yeah. that that is not like a garbage yeah. can. Yeah. And the health officer has a perfect right to be involved with that because yeah, right. that draws in animals. Like, yeah. Rabies, no, they have a rabies problem in Chittenden. It could be a potential rabies problem here. Absolutely. The health officer can file a health, off, a health order against the owner of that property and clean it up. So yeah. I'm thinking that this goes, yeah, I agree. That's I exactly that what this I This goes way beyond this particular zoning mm -hmm. regulation. And I don't know whether it's just okay to use that as a first oh, wow. shot across the bow to see what happens and then we use other tools if we need to. Oh, we could say that. But we but could we have say, other tools. Yeah, but I we think. could say um, this is in violation of this uh, regulation. Mm -hmm. Also, there are health concerns mm -hmm. that our health officer is involved with mm -hmm. and if we need to take it a step, we will. And, and it we could, could be in violation like of state littering laws. I haven't looked at them. And... If the health officer chooses to go there to talk to those people, she can go with a, with, with a um, sheriff as well. Yeah. Because you are, they are allowed to have a sheriff with them. Of course, yeah. they have to pay, yeah. but Absolutely. they should have a sheriff with them. But that's so right. Absolutely. You'll, you'll see later in the select board memo that the town health officer is also requesting right. that we find a new town health right. officer. Right. So oh, right. we're going to need some probably additional help with this. Mm -hmm. um, that's okay. we can, so, we got to get a letter out there. Yeah. We'll see if we get any action. If yeah. we don't, then we'll just have to go to the next step. Yeah. Yeah. Somehow she must have sent a letter, and this is all hearsay that I heard, but I heard that he then tried to start burning some of the trash <laughs> and then actually started a grass fire over there. Oh, yeah. um, I'm not sure when this was. I think it was last summer, maybe. Um, I, didn't, I don't remember any of that. And I don't remember yeah, there was some kind of grass fire because I know, again, you know, then yeah. you get all sorts of things coming at you. Um, but I 
someone from Classic Auto had told Tyson that when the fire started, he ran over to move Mike Brown's yeah. trailer, <laughs> so it didn't burn up because those oh, trees. So shit. it's yeah. So somehow Jenny did get something across oh. to this individual, but you know when I spoke with her, she she didn't feel like she was making any headway. Oh. But she that that but again I don't that it was someone told me that the attempt to burn the trash was a response. It could have had nothing to do with Jenny for all I know. Yeah, because I never remember Jenny coming in and talking about that. She usually kept, keeps us abreast of stuff that's going on. I never knew. No. No, I don't either. Oh, she yeah. never came in. Um, I, this was going on before I started because I'm pretty sure Bruce knew this was happening. Yeah. Because I remember hearing something yeah, yeah. about it, but then right. it kind of fell off. I was yeah. told, okay. oh, this person's going to come in and talk to you, and I never did, so it... Are you feeling okay with writing the line? Oh, yeah, I'm fine with that. You could also do that in concert with Ginny if you wanted to. As long as she has to do is sign her name to it. Yeah, I mean, I can reach out to her. You can send it certified. But yeah, of course. Well, I don't know what you guys do in this town. We do certified. Really? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I never got a certified letter from you guys, so just uh, we didn't have any. Just, have put, any just, just throw your trash on your front lawn and get a certified letter. <laughs> okay. And just some history of, clean of our first. enforcing something like this. There was a case five, six years ago um, in a not too far away part of town where neighbors complained about it wasn't really trash. It was stuff that some people maybe thought should have been thrown in the trash. But it was stuff. It was household objects. Yeah, that, that yeah, were that. were up, up on Clark Road. Yeah, yeah, yeah that were yeah. piled al uh, alongside a shed. And uh, Bruce asked a bunch of us on the select, well, asked us on the select board to go by there and, and give an opinion on that. And um, none of us thought that it was worth enforcing against. But that was a, a whole different ball game than bags of trash that yeah. are obviously it was just getting stuff. ripped open. It was yeah, it was just stuff. It wasn't neat, yeah, but it was yeah, stuff. Yeah, well, we're all. Keep our, you know, homesteads in different yeah. states of repair or disrepair. Yeah. <laughs> and there's no regulations to address that. Yeah. But this is a little beyond that. Yeah. 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 Okay. So everyone happy with sure. moving on to the Press next one? Plug. Yes. Uh, discuss potential changes to town office telephone and internet service. This is a whole lot of information. But there sure um, is. <laughs> To, to summarize it, RV Tech has been working with Consolidated Communications because for the new phone system that they're working on for us, um, we need to change a bit of our kind of underlying configuration with Consolidated. The change to the actual phone setup is a savings to the town um, for the new SIP lines, SIP, they call them SIP, but I, what is, I have to ask me all the tech stuff, um, for the new SIP lines that we need for the new phone system. Um, so that's going to give us a bit of a savings um, for the year for um, our phone costs. It would be, I guess it's about the same, same number seven. of lines? It's yes, it's the same number of lines. They're just, a, they're just a different type of line yeah, okay. um, than what we have today. So and, and is that as, a good number of lines that we have today? Is that is five lines? Is that yeah, a reasonable number yeah. for the office? Yeah, yeah. That's what we, I mean, I've had, we haven't had any issues, and that's what's been working since I've been here. So, yeah. mm -hmm. um, Is it too many? Well, no, I don't think so. It, okay. it actually does work. If all of us end up kind of being on the phone, yep. it, it gives us that flexibility. Yep. Okay. It hasn't happened, but you never know. Okay. Um, so as part of this process, RB Tech is well aware from coming into this office that we have a pretty slow internet speed. Mm -hmm. So they actually asked Consolidated to just put a quote together to actually upgrade us to a fiber line, um, which would be much faster internet than what we have today. The, so I actually have reached out to Com. So our internet is through Comcast currently. Mm -hmm. I had actually reached out to Comcast a couple months ago to see what it would be to increase our speed because my computer is downloading downloading updates. I have a running joke around here. I'm going to go home and do my updates because my internet's faster at home. Um, so I reached out and it was about the same price <laughs> as what Consolidated has quoted. And I was I just basically was like, ah, forget it. You know, it we're we're bumping along okay. But RB made some really good, RB Tech made some really good points um, that, you know, what we're on today is not as reliable, um, is certainly very slow, um, actually can be problematic for them as, as they're trying to download updates and things into our server and into our network. Um, 
Obviously, it's slower for us in the office. Um, doesn't usually pose a major issue. If we had a bunch of people in this room, though, trying to operate Zoom or do too many things, I mean, I'm plugged in for a reason with this laptop to try to limit the Wi-Fi strain because of um, yeah. Orca being on Wi-Fi. Uh, so, you know, definitely I try to employ some strategies in here to not stretch uh, the limited bandwidth that we have. So it would certainly be beneficial. Um, that being said, it's obviously a hit to the budget if we if we do upgrade our internet speed. Well, um, I just want to point out that what you were just talking about is a different issue than what you're presenting here, I think, because uh, the Wi-Fi speed, it ha that has to do with the capacity of the routers. It does. It's, it's the overall capacity but of our lines, which is slow, and it doesn't matter whether you're getting to them to, through Ethernet or, or Wi-Fi, it's still the, the same. Oh, capacity. correct, yeah, but it's even slower through the air than it is through sure. the Ethernet, which is why I have this laptop that we're running Zoom on today right. for this meeting directly plugged in. Mm -hmm. um, so you lose, whatever you have plugged in, hard yeah. line, is always going to be faster than what you have right. yeah. going through the air. Yes, yes. So that's the reason why to try to, what's already diminished by going through the air, I try to stay hard plugged right. in for Zoom so that Orca is operating off of the air and right. I'm operating at right. least off yeah. the plugged yeah. in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we're both not straining that, right, right, that right. limited air connection. Mm -hmm. um, so in, in general, it'd be about $2,200 um, in additional costs for the year for us to increase or improve our internet speed. We have some kind of funky stuff with the budget as I've been digging through this that, I mean, all in all, we can mitigate some of this because Guthrie's phone budget is a bit too high. The town budget is a bit too low. Um, I'd like to get some of that stuff consolidated <coughs> up. Um, I'm fine keeping the garage separated, but I'm not quite sure why Bruce was coding his cell phone to the town garage phone expense, but that's where it was. I think he just did that because the Verizon bill came in as one. You yeah. just put it to one place. Right. But when Tyson was hired, I put his cost to yeah. the municipal, to the town office right. cost, not so. Um, so so that, yeah. by the time we, we work through all the math, given that we have a little bit of flexibility in our phone budget, um, we'd be looking at about probably 900 ish dollars to $1,000 in additional cost to upgrade um, to a faster internet service for the office. So, I mean, up to you guys. I mean, we've been... So I, I didn't understand what the conversation was with Consolidated and, and Comcast. I see the comp Consolidated 100-100 fiber static IP yes. option 210 per month. But I Comcast didn't outline the Comcast numbers. I'd have okay. to go dig those back up. I basically okay. reached out to them. When I saw how much more it was going to be, I just... It, I purged it from my plate okay. and did not okay. pursue it any further. Okay. Um, this, because this came to me from our IT company, said, okay, I it was about the same price. Okay. I remembered it was about 200 ish a month okay. to go to Comcast. And so Comcast, I just didn't yeah. take it any further because... Same. It, Comcast there, well, can provide the, the 100... Uh, I can't speed. remember what the speed was with But Comcast. the thing with Comcast, with cable, is that uh, their upload speeds are so much slower than their download yeah. speeds, so it's not going to be 100 100. It might be, I don't know, 250 50 or something like that. So, <coughs> yeah. And I don't know how important upload is here. It sounds like maybe the listers are going to be uploading quite a bit with this yeah. new software. Not the next month or two. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. But anyway, it sounds like the, what so you're putting before us is just the consolidated. Consolidated. Yeah, yeah I didn't go the pull the Comcast the numbers. Mm -hmm. With consolidated. Mm -hmm. It's the yeah. same service you've been using. The experience that we've personally had with consolidated and, and getting the fiber, they've been great. Their ser their, right, their service when we have an issue, putting it in, yeah. has yeah. been fabulous. Same for me. Okay. Yeah, I, mean, I like the idea of everything being in one. Even the line I hit with my excavator the other day, it was looping down the road, so trucks were stopping. I called them up, and I said, you know, Lines in the road, I have to keep push, pushing it up with two by fours and the trucks can get underneath it. Mm -hmm. They came right out and fixed it like, <laughs> really quickly. It was really good. Yeah. yeah the only good reason choice. I didn't go pull the Comcast numbers as well is I like the idea of one bill too. Yeah. That would be, that well, would just if, be if, nice. If, and, yeah, you well, know, if we can just. If, kind of if Ruben's group together. is suggesting to go to consolidated, I'd. Okay, sounds good. Do we need a motion? 
I don't think can't so. Can't we just agree so. and you I make the you just... I said that. you did, but I don't know if you really do. I mean, I just... Consensus I says good Ooh. to go. Go for it. You're changing... Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, you're changing providers. <coughs> changing providers and there's an increase in cost. Yeah, yeah. we can make a motion. <coughs> you feel better. <coughs> I think you should. a minute saying you approve it. Yeah. 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 <coughs> yeah. Let's not beat a dead horse anymore. Sounds good. I'll make the motion, yes. Are oh, you going to make a motion? Well, we're going to vote or we have to vote. You're going to make them, you're no, going to vote on nothing? We just said we No, we just said by consensus that it's okay. Yeah. You all just kind of agreed. So we yeah. just agreed, so we're not making it. It's a beautiful thing. Move, move on. Okay. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. <laughs> that, that's what I, I thought that's what I heard you say. <laughs> uh, so the next thing on the agenda is appointments. Or our appointments. So. Uh, uh, here we go. Yep. So Nick Kosla, who I see is on, um, mm -hmm. did submit his name for the open position we have on the development review board. So um, Nick is here, if you can hear us. Um, yeah, there he is. Okay. So there he is. Yeah. Hello, Nick. How you doing? Good. Good. Thanks. <laughs> he has good sound. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. Thank you for throwing your hat in the ring. And, uh, hey, no, no worries. I, I thought it was a pretty good crossover already being on the planning commission, and uh, you know the town needs help. I'm happy to step in. Uh, are, you, are you keeping my seat nice and warm, or are you can you? I think you took my position on the planning commission. So th thank you for doing that. Don't, uh, don't, no don't, don't keep it warm for Scott. We've yeah, that's right. I'm not coming back. Yeah. Uh, so do we have anybody else that wants to become a member of the DRB or just Mr. Coastal? No one that reached out to me. Yeah? Good. Okay, well, well, sounds good. Thank you for thank you for offering being to willing to jump into new things yeah. in town here. Yes. Much yeah, it always works pretty that. well when you're on both because yes. you know the regulations. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. 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 yeah, thank you. Thank you very much for spending the time. So we usually vote on these at the end. Yeah, all we at once. lump them all together. Yeah. So um, we're going to go to the next um, emergency planning committee and so consider your hats in the ring and we'll probably accept it. Yeah, well, we're, yeah, we've had four people yep. reach out about, about this committee. Yep. Um, so, good, let's take yeah. them all. And then I renamed the ARPA Committee Future Projects Committee because okay. I don't really want to call it ARPA. Yeah, committee. that's a good idea. Um, so, Jenny Callen and Ed Deegan have expressed some interest in that, so yep. I think it's worthwhile at least getting it started. And Ed being on the Capital Improvement Committee, I right. think is a really, really good fit um, to be on this on this committee. So I was actually pretty excited when he expressed yep. his interest. Yep. Um, and Jenny, of course, very involved in town and um, would uh, I think be very good on this committee she as well. Be. Yeah. For CV Fiber, uh, Tom Fisher would like to continue as a town's representative. His term is just up. So um, I've reached out to Marshall Cottrell um, a couple times, but I haven't heard anything back. So I'll continue trying to confirm, but I don't want to assume right. um, that uh, reappointment there. So that's where we stand with that. And then the next is the town health officer. Um, I did provide you guys some information with what just very briefly what the state says about the town health officer. Um, I will can put this out uh, and see if anyone is interested. Jenny just really doesn't have the time um, or ability to perform this, this duty anymore. Okay. Is there, there a stipend connected with this? There is. I'm percent sure. Yeah, okay, well, is. maybe... A little bit more of an enticement for somebody, maybe. Yeah. And she told me when we spoke that the main thing she deals with are um, housing violations. And she said that's really kind of her issue right now. She just can't really get out a lot and do these inspections. Yeah. And that you have to get out and do. She said yeah. the dog bite things is all phone. Um, so that's a yeah. little bit easier for her, to, for her to field. But really the majority of the things she deals with are people reaching out with housing violations. What happens if we don't have a... I think it's a, I think I'm the fallback. The select board. 
the chair. I, I think I, yeah, I, I, think, really I think that yeah. happened last time. Yeah, yeah. yeah until, you, until we get somebody. I dodged a bullet because she stepped in, thank God. <laughs> well, that's good, so you'll go recruit. Oh yeah, I love it, and I've got a lot of time to do that too. <laughs> hey, thank you for taking that on. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. But you know, I can shift it to somebody else. <laughs> Carl, <laughs> animal control and health officer couldn't be any better. Yeah, yeah. No, okay, <laughs> but so we're gonna put it, Are we gonna put yeah. it on front porch form or something? Yeah. Okay. I'll put it on Sounds good. <laughs> and a printout from the state website provides a high-level summary of the requirements for the town health yeah. officer. Yeah. I'll make a motion to um, appoint all of those individuals to those appropriate committees. On slate. Yep, second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it, they do have it. Um, Jim, Jim was, I'm yeah. not sure we read out the names of those on the emergency planning committee list. So just oh, yeah, this. we did not. So oh, right. Rachel Grossman, Patty Javara, Renee Kibit Kyler, and Lydia Fazy are the, the four names that we have down here. I think all the other names that are here, we, we you said, yeah. I, re I, re I read them before, so it's okay. Oh, you read it? I read them before. Okay. I won't correct your English. <laughs> uh, so the next item is preliminary update on property tax payments. It was a busy day with tax payments today. Yeah. And obviously they are still coming in. And Michelle, yeah. what you see here was what essentially she had gotten and put it in process. Probably from what we received until about 2 p.m. today. Um, so we still had quite a bit coming in, though this morning was certainly busier than this afternoon. Um, and then payments will still be put in the Dropbox tonight. So we will have more, I'm going to guess, in the morning when we come in. And I know I've heard the box click a couple times <laughs> since, <laughs> since 5 p.m. So or since we last checked it, which was okay. around 5. Uh, so... I mean, this is very preliminary. I mean, there's still numbers, and there's still a, check, a stack of checks. I know Denise and I worked together to double-check accounting of over $5,000 of a payment that came in at 4.30 today, so in cash. So, um, cash? <laughs> yeah. So we, we, we have a new kind of thing when it's, and I think it's good when it's cash of that, any significant fund um, amount, we have two people count. Yeah. So Denise and I counted that at 4.30 today. Um, so... Uh, so definitely that's not in these numbers yet. So I know I've seen checks. I know I've stamped and received checks that are not in these numbers yet. So I'll obviously give you a better update. Is this, is this, update no, is this normal? These kind of we numbers? don't know. What? Okay. Just kidding. We'll know next time. Yeah. This is kind and of then we'll see where things, because there have been some delinquent people yeah. that are in delinquent status that have been paying. So we yeah. really need to get a feel for that. Yeah. And then we can start talking next steps as it relates to that process as yeah, well. Yeah, we, we need to get all the numbers together and who paid, yeah. we didn't pay, blah, blah, blah. This number is sort of like... It gives you at least a gauge, but it's, It says again, some people bought in money. That's basically it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. There's a bunch of payments sitting in that money. And there was right a significant amount of money. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't really give you any hard information as far as comparing last year. Okay. Year, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We will. Yeah. yeah. Fair enough. Thank you for all your hard work today. Yeah, really. <laughs> A lot. Call out the truth. Mm -hmm. Thank God Denise was here. From what he said. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Please. She didn't plan to work all day, but she did. So. <laughs> she no, that was nice. Please. Texted her this morning. We had a. I'm not sure. I think I made, but we had a family emergency with the town clerk. Yeah. So she yeah. was out. Yeah. So. Yeah. Can you please thank her for us? Yes. And, and please, please also convey our. Our thoughts to Rosie and, and her yes. family, and yes. please tell her she that we've, okay. that we've all been thinking of her. And yeah, I'm okay. hopeful that Rosie's Thank back you. tomorrow because that means everything's going okay personally. Right, so. right. right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so the next thing is the warrant. We have it here. What's that? We're so ahead of schedule. We are. Oh, we are. <coughs> That'll all end. Well, exactly. I, I know it's not over yet, but I just like to note that. Every meeting that the new, the second to new, newest select board member, these meetings have been way ahead of the schedule. Oh. Just like that, know that we can continue that. We try to. Okay. Just Sometimes there's circumstances I understand, beyond but it my could, control. 
but some of us may but, have, may have some, some good luck here. I just want yeah. to convey that. Well, yeah. <laughs> knock on wood. Yeah. It's, it's so hollow. That, I think um, it's hollow. Though. Have you started? No. They're pretty small. <clears throat> does have a couple large payments on it though. One would be the 2024 the Mack truck. Yep. So oh, um, yeah, that truck is in here? Yes. Oh yeah, right there. The truck is there in addition to the tree yep. um, project. Yep. It is also in there as well. Yep. So those are your two outliers that are kind of outside of normal business, at least that I can think of off the top so of So it costs us that much to get the service on the generator, right? For the town office, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The warrants are not on the website? Oh, shoot. Sure. Sure. I'm sorry. No, yeah. no, okay. No, just well, I'll, I'll pass it on. I will add those out for Do we, do we, I mean, let me see what we have. Do we have a service contract? Bushy is our... I'm not sure. <coughs> I, I didn't inherit real clear. Okay. Because I have a contract. We so have a contract. I would think, yes. So I need to reach out to them and... That was kind of new when that... Check that out. Yeah. We, it's, you know, he comes and changes the oil. They come twice a year. Mm -hmm. And if there's an emergency, I can call him up and he gets I out of I don't remember having a contract. <coughs> probably should. They've what, serviced what is, what is it, the, I think, once fee? before since I've been Four here. Four but... That's... Uh, we don't pay anything. 425. That's a, probably what we pay for our yearly contract. And they just... I don't remember having a contract. <coughs> something to look into. I have in not your spare seen time. one, but that doesn't mean... <coughs> okay. <coughs> Did you call them or they just showed up? They just showed up. Okay. Who was it? We do have one. Bushy. <laughs> Bushy. Bushy. A Bushy? Bushy. It's Bushy. a father and son. Yeah. They put our generator in and oh, yeah. they're really responsive. Did they install the generator out of curiosity? Yeah. yeah. They installed yeah. it. Okay. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. We didn't have one. Yeah. Until no, just recently. No, no, no. Bushy yeah. put it yeah. in and services it. Yeah. Yeah. But it was a, that's only a year or two ago we got it. It, was, it wasn't that long ago. No. It might have been pre-COVID, but not much. Yeah, it wasn't that long ago. I remember. Right. Um, so the warrants, and then your uh, the town administrative report. That's... Uh, well, so that's first on that is, and I mentioned that Matt Foster's the 28 yeah. payment is in that, in that warrant. Um, so he has finished removing the trees. The road crew is still continuing to pick up the trees. Um, I think they're going to be out tomorrow doing that as well. It's just it's a lot Thank of you. trees. Mm -hmm. um, so I, Paul Kate actually popped in here just after five today, and I know he was out there today. Jeff Quetta was out there today with Guthrie, and everything looks good. So um, yeah. all went well. Matt has been great to work with. Um, he did send, but it came in this afternoon the invoice for the remainder because he just finished today but I told him that would be on the next the next select board meeting we were already done with, with getting things together with this one and so then, I saw him working on Murray Bliss today I thought there yeah it was Murray Bliss and Mark oh Murray Bliss okay yeah. that's what they were yeah, today that was so one I went by and yeah. they were working yeah. yeah and then next the uh, as we just mentioned too the 2024 Mack truck mm -hmm. um, was yeah. on this warrant did you mm -hmm. see it John? Um, and that truck is currently at the Tenco facility in New York, and it's currently, hopefully, being worked on. Guthrie and Frank had a, they thought they were going to have to go there, but luckily were able to, thankfully, with technology today, to do a phone video type thing, um, to review the controls and where they want everything placed in the truck. Mm -hmm. Sent a lot of, Guthrie sent pictures, they sent pictures back. So he's basically continuously in conversation with them. If questions come up, but that is in process. So he thinks, he said there's a slight chance, you keep fingers crossed, maybe we'd see the truck in June, but his, he thinks most reasonably we'll see it in July. It'll be ready for us to take possession at that time. Um, another shout out for Guthrie. He actually invited me and I went with him to the Municipal Equipment Show and Field Day that was uh, at the Berry Auditorium last week. And I just wanted to let you guys know, I think it's great that Guthrie includes me in things like this. And he took me so that I could meet. Number one, he put me in a truck. I got in a truck that was exactly like what we're getting. And he wanted me to see what the controls were like and talked me through um, the things in the truck. So, um, so and, you know, he was able to show me equipment and show me things there that, you know, it was very interesting. 
And then I got to meet people from other towns in addition to meeting some of our vendors. Uh, so uh, it was a really good opportunity, a good time to spend a little bit of time with the road crew as well. Because um, obviously I don't engage with Guthrie a lot, but not necessarily the rest of them. So it's a good opportunity to get out and That's great. That's wonderful. kind of learn, learn their world a little bit more. Um, next I have is uh, I want to discuss the potential to purchase an additional laptop for the town office that could be used in a loaner situation uh, or as a loaner in situations to mitigate an issue we've been having lately with three listers in the office at the same time. We only have two workstations, so one lister has been going out into our very small researcher or copier area and kind of setting up a desk. And like today, I, I asked them this morning if all three were going to be in. I said, because that can't happen today, because just so you guys know, when tax payments come in, we stamp your payment slip, we walk to the copier, we photocopy right. that, yeah. and a lot of times your check that you've given us as well for you, we give that back to you. We needed flow, and there just wasn't, there's not enough room if someone is trying to sit and use a workstation in that area. So I put that computer there when I first started, because Bruce was like, I don't know what you're gonna do with it. And I'm like, oh, there's a hole here, I'm gonna put it here. Um, I thought, typically it was used, it was the auditor workstation, um, that was more of a flex space in the office. That's where Tyson sits today. I put it there because no one was ever at it. Anyway, from what I heard, no one ever really used it. And if they did, it was typically on the weekends. I said, well, this will be fine here. Well, unfortunately, in the events of last week, it's it's not fine there. And I'd rather just remove that um, to eliminate that issue from occurring again in the future. And if we had a loaner laptop, I would have to redo some things with this network cable because I have it on the guest network right now. But um, we could... I could, okay, if three of you are here, here, you can check out the laptop for today. Here's the laptop, use it here. I would never let that laptop leave the premises, um, but it's it's an idea um, mm -hmm. because if, if the three listers need to be here with two workstations, it's the best thing I can come up with that makes sense to can we end this conversation in okay? In the room. With that, can we end this conversation in okay the uh, purchase of a laptop? Would, would that be an addition to? machine that's out there? Or I would actually it? take that machine yeah. it's just it's a desktop so I can't practically put that anywhere else. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So um, yeah. I would just remove it. Rough idea it. how what type of laptop you're looking at? I mean we'd probably be looking at 2500 ish or so. Oh a good laptop. Well that would include our VTEX time to get it set up and all of that. I mean I'd get a pretty low end I mean I'd get the most economical laptop that I could possibly get that our VTEX would feel comfortable with. We can also not do this at all? Um, no, that's fine. I mean, laptops. because they work. They managed to work it out today. <laughs> when I said you couldn't do that, <laughs> so I don't know how often. I hate to spend money on something that we don't need right. on a regular basis. Right. Last year, I don't recall this this issue, and I know no one was sitting at that desk, even though it was before Tyson. Doesn't that encourage them to put more hours in? I was gonna say. <laughs> I'm fine not doing it. Yeah. But I then request that I can remove that that that. Okay, just remove that. We'll see what happens. Because yeah, I just yeah. want your approval to do that because I did ask to do that. Yes. And Hold was it. was said no, but yes. done. Okay. And we'll see what happens. So I'm fine with the re the researchers don't ask to use that. Oh no, yeah. it's not for it's a town office yeah. computer. Yeah. No. Yeah. No one else could be allowed to get yeah. on that unless you were somehow yeah. working in the town office. Yeah. So I think good. I've I've used it once, like eight months ago when I was in here yeah. doing some stuff, but in, in, in the day, but uh, I usually bring in my own. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Get rid of it. Okay. Okay. Um, just to let you know, the uh, normally I would have had the financial reporting package for you, and Michelle was working feverishly on it last Thursday. Mm -hmm. um, and she's just, you know, she's dealing with the banking transition. She's yeah. now dealing with an extra bank rack. This yeah. is honestly her first time doing all the tax payments on her own. Let's, she started on May 9th last year. So this is really, really her first time handling yeah. this on her own. So it's 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 been a lot. So I told her to remove that from her highest priority list. I said, you know, obviously keep working on it, but let's yeah. get through the taxes first. Yeah. So I will have that for you at the next fine. meeting. Yeah. Perfect. And then next, I just want to, we kind of already did, but I just want to formally let you all know I really thank Denise for being here. She has been a lifesaver in many respects over the last few months, but today she, I texted her this morning, said I'll fill you in when you get here, can you go get the mail? 
can you, you know, immediately started, what do we need to do? And Denise was on it. I mean, right. came into chaos and Michelle and I dealing with a full parking lot and a bunch of people here to pay their taxes before nine o'clock this morning. We opened the door a little early to go ahead and get started with it. So, um, so anyway, Denise and Denise worked all day today and, you know, she was hoping to only work Monday, Tuesday this week, but today was like, oh, I'll just see what you need. I'll just see what you need. And, you know, I'm always trying to not abuse the, the graciousness of this lady, but she's she's just always here for us. So you her wanted, collective her off of Yes, yeah, so I just wanted you all to know that. <laughs> yeah. I think it's important to do Heartful that. Thanks. We had two new permit applications since your last meeting. One was actually a new dwelling, so kind of to the listener's point, we are seeing activity yeah. in town. Um, and then a new storage barn. And then you have your remaining, your upcoming schedule. Yep. So and special meeting is just a, it's just a meeting. Special meeting just means it's not happening on your first or third Monday. <coughs> right. So it's, it's a special meeting date. Following Monday. Yeah. So it's not necessarily it. special as in it's an addition. It's special as in it's not at the regular time. Okay. Now we have to go into executive session, I believe. I move to enter executive session to discuss the personnel matter. What else, Mr. Uh, right. Mr. Chairman? Okay, so we are out of executive session, are we? I yes. believe so. What time is it? <laughs> it's 834. Okay. <laughs> 834, we are getting out of executive session. No action has been taken. Or will be taken. Or will be taken. Yeah. Anything else we have to discuss tonight? Um, well, actually, we said no action will be taken, but in terms of, um, we did discuss uh, in connection with personnel matters, getting the, uh, the Charter Committee back together, and we put uh, a time yeah. of September for that. Um, the, let's talk about the next steps for doing that. Um, we have a standing Charter Committee. We need to call them. And we or need email. To, to email them, and uh, do we want to then put out a call? Well, I guess maybe we should first see who's willing to continue right. serving. Uh, we don't want to get the committee to be too big. It's been a good size. It but was it's how many? Seven to nine. Seven, I think so, yeah. 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 Is, is the reason why, if the committee happened to want to meet before September, that you're waiting before. for September? Hmm? It'd be all right with me. It'd be all right with me. It's just that it's easier to get. I, I understand. It's hard. No, no, I, yeah. I get it, but maybe yeah. they'd want to meet earlier. But, but what we should do is email all the people that were on it before. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and they worked well. They worked well. And, well they're, and they're still, well. just to be clear, it's a standing committee, so they're they're still on it. The, yeah, the yeah. select board decided to keep this going. Yeah, as a standing committee. Yeah, but I can reach out to see who sure. is available. Yeah, to be active absolutely. Now. Yeah, and then uh, and then I've been the select board liaison to the committee in the past, and if somebody else is interested in taking that on, then. Be the other, fill you in on that. The other thing about the um, reaching out, should we be uh, specific about what they're going to discuss? Um, yes, I yeah, think I so. would say so. I think so. Yeah. yeah. And are there any other issues that we want them to discuss? I'm trying to remember if we've come up with anything. We should probably just ask them to just take a look around at the legislative landscape and what other towns are doing to see if there's anything else they want to bring to it. But we yeah. definitely have two positions we want to look at. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Is that it? Okay. I believe so. I make a motion we adjourn tonight's meeting. That's the fuck word. I'll second it. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The aye. Here they do have it. <laughs>